Hi everybody, Patrick here from EscapeRoomElectronics.com and EngineeringShop.com. Uh, this is a one-off project. Uh, I used to sell uh, ultrasonic transmitter modules and receiver modules for uh, 40 kilohertz air transducers and actually 25 kilohertz air transducers and I wanted to upgrade the design and that's exactly what I've done here. Uh, on the top we've got the ultrasonic transmitter with uh, uh, quite a few options and the uh, receiver. The receiver has three passive stages of amplification, uh, one active stage of amplification through an op amp, and a comparator. And you don't even need to use all of them. You can connect to the output of the stage one, stage two, stage three. Uh, you can connect to the output of uh, the active stage four and the output of the comparator. And you can even check the voltage of the, uh, of the comparator. Um, and I'll be using the oscilloscope to show uh, off all of the options of the uh, transmitter and receiver. So first of all, let's talk about the transmitter. To the right, we've got a uh, our power supply, three pin header, nine volts, and two ground connections. So nine V and GND, GND. And we've got three 100 nanofarad uh, ceramic ceramic capacitors, and above them we've got uh, two pin jumpers, which means that. Uh, if we add jumpers to these, we're adding them to the uh, to the oscillator equation. So having one shorted will have a, a faster frequency than two or three. If you have all three shorted, we're going to have a relatively low frequency. Uh, if, we want, we want to, if we want to calibrate to 40 kilohertz, we're going to need to short uh, two of the three. Any two will work. Um, we've got a transmit button, but if you have the uh, power uh, header shorted, then it bypasses the button and basically will transmit as long as power is is uh, is, is connected. If power is connected and this this jumper is removed, then we will transmit every time we press and hold this button. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to have it transmitting as long as power is applied. Uh, next, we've got uh, in and G and D, a two pin header. Or sorry, G D. G D is ground. And if we want to use our own sine wave or square wave to uh, drive the transducer through the uh, through the transistor. We can apply our own our own uh, frequency here. Just connect your your uh, signal to in and the uh, the ground from your external signal generator to the GD pin. Now next we've got a three pin header labeled A slash B, and um, if we have it connected to A. Uh, sorry, the left in the middle pin, we're selecting A, which means we're selecting the onboard oscillator. And I've got this calibrated to 40 kilohertz. If we've got uh, the middle and the right pins shorted, B, then we're actually going to be selecting our external frequency. We're going to bypass the onboard oscillator altogether. I'm going to set this back to A. And lastly, we've got a two pin header that allows for us to probe our transmitting frequency, whether we've selected A or B, and this will allow for us to probe SIG. In this, and if we probe SIG, we can determine the frequency of the transmitter. And obviously, we have another GD pin, a ground pin, uh, because we're going to need to use to probe the ground pin with the negative uh, clamp of the oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do is uh, right now I'm going to short two of the three capacitors because I want to use 40 kilohertz but if you have a different transducer that you want to replace the 40 kilohertz tr uh, transducer with then you can adjust the frequency I'll actually show you the range of frequency using all three jumpers from one to three I'll show you that in just a minute but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my oscilloscope and I'm going to probe right here what I've done is I've connected a female to male connector uh, to the GD lead so I can connect the negative clamp on my oscilloscope here and I'm going to connect the positive clamp of my oscilloscope to the SIG line so I can probe the transmitting frequency and I'll place the ground connection to the GD line. There we go. I've got A selected and I'm going to have constant transmitting uh, because I've shorted the power header. So now as soon as I apply 9 volts to the 9 volt line and DC ground to one of the two ground lines, this will transmit and then I can adjust the frequency of transmission. For the sake of showing you the entire spectrum of uh, frequency that we can use to drive the transmitter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one jumper shorting one of the three capacitors. Uh, then we'll do two to show the range of two and then we'll do three to show the range of three. We adjust the uh, 
we adjust the frequency by turning this variable resistor. It's a 10 turn multi, uh, multi turn potentiometer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply power. I've created this little battery connector that connects positive to 9 volts and battery ground to the GND pin. I've turned the variable resistor all the way to the left, and you'll know that you've turned it all the way to the left. It'll keep turning, but you'll hear click, 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 which means it's turned all the way to the left. So now I'm going to power up, and I'm going to show you my uh, the screen of my oscilloscope. And then I'm going to turn this 10 turns all the way to the right so we can see the entire spectrum. So 75 kilohertz, and I'll turn the pot all the way to the right until it clicks. As you can see, it's changing. Now we're at 54 kilohertz and then it stops and starts to click at about 45 kilohertz. So now I'll add a second jumper to the second capacitor line. I've turned the pot all the way to the left again and I've added the second uh, jumper and we're at 41.5 kilohertz and I'll turn the pot all the way to the right. As you can see we're getting a lower frequency. Now we're at 30 kilohertz down to 24 kilohertz and that's where it ends. So I'm going to turn the pot all the way to the left and I'm going to add that third jumper in place. We start at 27 kilohertz and I turn the pot all the way to the right and the minimum frequency we have is 17 kilohertz. So the lowest we go is 17 kilohertz, the highest we go is about 75 kilohertz. So you have that range and you can easily choose your transmitting range. The ideal frequency for the transducers that come with these DIY kits are 40 kilohertz. So I'm going to add two jumpers to the capacitor lines and I'm going to remove one of them and I'm going to calibrate to 40 kilohertz. There, I'm at about 40.03 kilohertz, which is absolutely perfect. That is the nominal drive frequency, the center frequency for these air transducers. So now that we've talked about the transmitter, let's talk about the receiver module. First things first, let's talk about the power options. You can use either 9 volts or 5 volts. There is a small 5 volt regulator, a 78L05 module right here. Uh, and uh, But if you're going to use 9 volts and regulate down to 5 volts through this regulator, you need to add this jumper. If you're using 5 volts, you need to remove this jumper because this adds the uh, this. And if you add 5 volts, it's not going to work properly. So if you're going to use 5 volts from Sierra Arduino Uno, remove this jumper. If you're going to use 9 volts and regulate down to 5 using this 5 volt regulator, then add this jumper. We've got uh, 9 volts, 5 volts, and ground. So DC ground. So that those are our power options. And uh, once you power, it's waiting for the uh, for the uh, the module is waiting for uh, a 40 kilohertz. Um, frequency and it will receive at between 30 and 50 but just not as well. A 40 kilohertz signal is uh, the bee's knees for this module. So again we've got three stages of, of uh, passive ampli ampli amplification, just transistor um, amplifiers. We've got a single stage op amp amplifier after the three stages of passive. It's not really necessary, especially if you're using 40 kilohertz, but we also have the option of feeding the output of that um, active stage into uh, a comparator so we can have a square wave output. And uh, we're going to use those two pots on the right to, uh, to, uh, to make the adjustments to that. One adjusts the gain of the uh, active stage amplifier and uh, the, the other pot deals with um, the, uh, the negative input voltage of the comparator. I don't expect you'll be using those stages because really the three passive stages of amplification are more than enough. But what we've got on the top here are a whole bunch of pins. Um, we've got stage 1, S1, S2, S3, so stage 2 and stage 3. Um, we've got the op amp uh, output. Um, we got the comparator output. And we've got the reference that from the variable resistor to the input of the uh, negative, um, sorry, we've got the, the, res the, the basically the pot voltage the, to the, the input of the comparator, CV, so comparator voltage, and we've got GD as a ground reference line. So really, if you're going to plug the out any of these outputs into your Arduino, and, you, uh, and you're not powering the module with, uh, with the ground from your Arduino, you have that ground to connect to an external circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be connecting the ground clip from my oscilloscope to the GD line and then I'll be connecting to all of these different 
uh, stages and references as we go along. But first I need to make sure that my ultrasonic transmitter is set up across the room and consistently transmitting. So then we actually have a 40 kilohertz reference to show you the differences along these lines. So let's do that right now. So I've got my transmitter just transmitting away about two meters away from my receiver. So I've got nine volts from my power supply to the nine volt line. I've got my nine volt EN uh, jumper placed and I've got my GD, my, my DC negative connected to the GND terminal on the power line right there. And uh, um, again, the transmitter is about two to two and a half meters away. I'm going to aim the receiver at it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to uh, probe S1, so stage one, then stage two, and so on. And I'll explain as uh, things go on. Uh, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a male to female uh, wire to the GD line so that I can use my oscilloscope probe negative, the negative clip, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to probe S1, so this is stage 1, this is the weakest stage of amplification. I'm going to make sure that the transmitter and the receiver are lined up with each other, and then I'm going to look at the oscilloscope. Now ignore the frequency, because that is, it's, it's not capturing the frequency correctly because we've got such a small sine wave. So that is stage 1. So now I'm going to stop the video, I'm going to uh, probe stage 2 without moving anything. I just, uh, in order to probe stage 2 I have to get in front of the camera. So I'm going to stop the video and probe stage 2. Stage 2 doesn't look a whole lot different, but let's have a look at stage 3. Stage 3 is looking quite nice and we are actually receiving 40 kilohertz exactly. So this is what we want to see. So now let's look at the first uh, active stage output. The variable resistor right next to the 9V enable jumper is the gain for the uh, is the adjustable gain for the uh, active stage of amplification. So this is a little bit weird, and it's because we've got um, because we haven't made our proper adjustments to the pot, and so I've got the pot turned all the way to the left. I'm going to try not to block the transmitter uh, signal, and I'm going to turn all the way to the right. And as you can see, it's starting to change and we are all the way to the right. So the signal is no longer a nice sine wave, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but rather something quite different. Uh, why don't we look at the, uh, the, comparator, the comparator voltage. So what the comparator is doing is, the comparator variable resistor is, what it's doing is it's feeding a variable voltage to the negative input of the uh, comparator. And so we'll see a square wave depending on how that is set. So first things first, uh, what we probably want to do based on this signal to get a square wave is we probably want to set the voltage to hmm, 2.5 volts. That'll give us a square wave. And I'll tell you why. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to breach the signal for a second. I'm going to step past it. There we go. Okay, so if I set the comparative voltage here, we're going to see a square wave. Or here. If we set it right in the middle, we're going to get to see some funky stuff. So I'm going to set the... Uh, the square wave, or sorry, the comparator rel uh, reference voltage here or here. And the variable resistor um, for that is actually on the bottom side of the board. I'll show you that in just a second. So this is the active stage ga gain, and this is the comparator reference voltage. So now I'm going to probe CV first. After making some adjustments to the gain and to the uh, the comparator variable resistor. Uh, this isn't exactly a square wave, but I think the frequency is too fast for the or uh, too high for this specific uh, op amp, and so we're getting more of a triangle wave. We are getting uh, clipping at the top, which is expected for a square wave, but we're not actually clipping, uh, having a negative clip. So there's obviously a lot of experimenting you can do with these two sets. We are getting a 400 and or sorry, a 40 kilohertz. Uh, triangle-ish wave from the comparator output, but really you'll only really need the first three stages of, uh, of uh, passive amplification. So the next video that I make will actually be uh, assembly videos, because for the time being I'm just going to be selling these in DIY kit form. Um, just because I don't want to assemble these myself, it just takes too much time and obviously they won't be expensive enough for me to be outsourcing the assembly like I do with some of my escape room props. 
So if you have any questions, uh, drop drop a line below. Uh, message us through escape through uh, engineeringshock.com. These will be available in about a week at uh, engineeringshock.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.